And so one thing I'll talk about is just how do you help your team understand what you do and give them sort of visibility into the critical pieces without sort of overwhelming them with, with all kinds of information. Emily, thank you for joining us today. Could you just quickly tell us who you are and who you work for, please? Sure. I'm Emily Nakashima, and I'm VP of Engineering at Honeycomb, an observability startup uh, based in San Francisco, California. Great. And later on this year in Oakland, you're going to be joining us on stage at Leading Eng. Could you just tell us a little bit about what you're going to be talking about up there? Sure. So I'll actually be speaking about the VP of Engineering role. And in particular, I want to talk about some of the different sort of shapes or archetypes you see in that role uh, that can be different from company to company. Um, I'll also go into a little bit of how to prepare for the role if it's something you think you might be interested in. So there's some critical skills like strategy and managing managers that maybe don't come up as much in some of the other uh, leadership roles that I'll um, talk about how to practice and uh, you know build your skills in. Great. And one thing that I love about Leading Eng is that you have lots of senior folks from all sizes of companies. Do you find that the VP role changes depending on the company size at all? Yeah, it can be really different at different stages of the company. So if you're at a teeny tiny like Series A startup, um, you could be really doing everything as the VP of engineering. You know, you could be jumping in and helping out with incidents. You could be running the recruiting process end to end. You know, you could be the person ordering snacks and putting them in the kitchen. Um, and as the company gets bigger, the, I think the role narrows quite a lot. And often you're going to become more focused on strategy. You know, you might be still working on recruiting and working with talent, but you're sort of playing the long game and then you get to hand them off to the recruiting team. So the actual things that you focus on can really change based on the size and stage of the company. Um, which is you know, that part feels a little obvious. I think that the role can also change depending on who else is at the company. So, um, you know, what the shape of your CTO is or who your sort of um, most senior engineering ICs are can really shape the role as well. And I'll, I'll talk about that um, during the, the conference, which I think will be a great, a great uh, compliment to the, the parts of it that are just sort of more about company size and stage. Amazing. And what's one of the biggest lessons you've learned about being a VP of engineering? You know, to me, the thing that didn't seem obvious going in, but that I've really learned now is how much you have to work to give your team visibility into what you actually do and what's important to you. Uh, you know, I think the further you get up the management ladder, the more, you know, sort of appearing to do a good job in your role can be really decoupled from actually doing a good job in your role. And there's so much curiosity about sort of what you think about, uh, what you're working on, how it shapes the day-to-day -day priorities of the company. And, um, you know, you can really do a lot to illuminate that to your team, or it can be sort of completely hidden behind closed doors. And I think it's really important to help your team sort of stay aligned and be on the same page to give them some of that transparency. So I'll talk about that as well. Right. And let's fast forward a little bit. You're coming down from the stage. You're feeling very relieved. What's one thing that you hope the audience take away from your talk? You know, to me, the most important thing I want people to take away is I just want more people to encourage, uh, to consider whether this role might be something that they'd be interested in down the road. Um, before I started talking to Honeycomb's CTO and co-founder, Charity Majors, about potentially stepping into this role, I'd sort of never considered it for myself, even though I had been in management for a while. And I think that's true for a lot of folks, unless they have a sort of a sponsor or a mentor that really pushes them toward it. So um, I want to sort of demystify it and um, give more folks a chance to think about whether it might be a fit for them. I think, you know, the role would really benefit from a, a wider range of, of perspectives and backgrounds. Yeah. And why is it that you specifically wanted to share this story with the Leading Eng audience? Yeah. You know, to me, one of the wonderful things about Leading Eng is that you have such an incredible range of leadership roles, you know, there in the audience. So I think understanding this VP of engineering role can be really important for leaders around the company. You know, whether you're a CTO who sort of is paired up with a VP of engineering day to day, or if you're, you know, an engineering manager, manager of managers who has to work with someone in the VP of engineering role. Um, you know, we've sort of got so many folks in the room who might collaborate with this role, but might not sort of understand what the actual pressures in the role are and uh, how it works on the inside. So um, I think it'll be really valuable to sort of have a conversation about um, how all these pieces on the leadership team fit together and, and how we could get even better at that if we sort of spend some time focusing on it.